Hey, Racer fans, it's the season finale of the Racer Report with head coach Chris Hatcher. Highlights of a big win over SEMO starts right now. Hi folks and welcome to the Racer Report, the season finale with head coach Chris Hatcher as the Racers ended up the football season this past Saturday with a big home victory over Southeast Missouri State, 42-35. to And uh, coach, we're going to look at the highlights in just a minute. Senior day, beautiful day to play football, and the Racers came through and it was special teams that uh, did the trick on Saturday. Well, you know, the ironic thing is that's been the most consistent part of our game all season was the special teams play. And boy, they made play after play. Um, kind of a lackluster game effort wise on both teams it really was and uh, it was kind of like ah oh, let's get the season over with but all wins count the same and um, we held on at the end for a, for a great win send our seniors out victorious um, but the big big plays on special teams were the difference in the ball game. Well, with this victory, the Racers finished up 4-4 four and four in the Ohio Valley Conference for 2012. So let's roll the highlights and take a look at it. I won't give it away on the special team stuff. You'll see it uh, here as we go. But, uh, Coach, uh, you first uh, started out. SEMO had the ball first. You made them punt. This is the Racers' first possession. Well, we, you know, we played good defensively in the first half, and we throw a little screen to Jamal Berry, who's really come on well of late. Um, we're moving the ball. We're playing with great tempo. Here's Jamal again. Had a nice day receiving. Had a good day rushing the football. Um, then we get down here in, the, in this kind of gray area, right around the 30-yard line. We decide to go for it. This is a fourth and one play. We come up short. Don't get it. Um, and, and things aren't really going well offensively for us at this time. So then Southeast Missouri takes over. The drive starting with about 11 minutes to go in the first quarter. Levi Terrell gets a really good rush down to the Murray 45, and but you made Southeast uh, settle for the field goal, and that uh, you did that a couple of times dur during the game. Well, defensively, they moved the ball well, and um, you know we missed a tackle, give up the big play, so they kick off to us, get a good block here by Jamal Berry, and then old Walter, um, you know he finished the season number two in the nation in all-purpose yardage and. Well, I can't believe this one guy tripped him up, but what a great r return. We come out, we throw a little corner post route to Javante Trotter, the senior out of Tampa, Florida, to take the lead 7-3. to three. And actually, the, that three down 3-0 three was the only time we were down the entire ball game. That's right. Uh, the racers go up 7-3. to three. So then they kick it off with 7.53 to go in the first quarter. Southeast goes back on offense. A completion of 14 yards. And here, again, your, your defense bends a little bit, but you don't break, and then Southeast attempts a 50-yard field goal. Well, that was a good tackle by Josh Manning, and then we had great coverage here. Um, there's um, a, a great play. Brandon Hathaway, the freshman out of Smyrna, Tennessee, gets the sack. And again, we hold him to a field goal. So, you know, we're bending a little bit, Dave, but we, we're not breaking, and um, a long kick, and it was into the wind. I was surprised they kicked it that far. So we come out of there. Um, still up 7-3, and we go right back to work. Great block there by Drew Kelly, and Jamal just gets tripped up, and that was kind of um, indicative of the entire night offensively for us. We just couldn't get in rhythm. Then on a third down pass, um, we hit Javante Trotter um, in the shoulder with the ball, pops in the air. They stop the drive, and, um, and boy, we just... Um, Things aren't going our way offensively, but, but the, defensively but, we're playing well. You know, you, you you put your defense in a couple of tough spots, but they came through almost every time. Huzzy gets the stop there, and then Southeast has to punt it away. Yep, and we get a good return. You know, all night um, we, we did a good job. That I forget that one we fair caught. But we, we've kind of come up a little short there. We get a, um, a, a penalty, get backed up, and then Steven Mix, who's been awesome all year, gets a – a great roll. He kind of kicked it off the side of his foot, but we pin him deep as we head into the second quarter. Going into the second quarter, Racers up 7-3, to three, and uh, Simo goes back to work here. Of course, you pinned him deep, 
on the four. That was a first and 10 play from the 16. So that's a loss of one as T. Ray Malone made the tackle. And, but then Southeast uh, gets it going here and eventually scores uh, or has to punt again. And that's the, when we got the touch, touchdown on the punt return. Yeah, well, we, we ended up getting a face mask penalty, but we brought the blitz. Brandon Wicks, who had 16 tackles on the night, him and Corey Addison get in there and Chris Staten. Um, and, and so we stop them around midfield. Um, they end up punting. And then watch this. Old Walter Powell gets confused where he's at. He catches it in the end zone. Um, it's one of those no, 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 go, go, go <laughs> moments. And he sets an FCS record for a 100-yard punt return. Um, and uh, what a great wow. play. Um, that, he goes against yeah. everything that you teach the guy. <laughs> and so when he comes over to the sideline, it was one of those, hey, great job. Way yeah, to, way to, way to make that, a play. He looked like a thoroughbred heading for the finish line on that one, too. So the 100-yard punt return, racers up 14-3. to So then Southeast goes back to work. We're about nine minutes before the half. Uh, nice play there by Blake Salter. Yeah, hold them to a field goal again. Yeah, we again, um, you know, we're giving up some plays. They're an option team, and, you know, it's hard to, hard to stop them. Um, but we, we, we get that, and th to me this was a crucial drive because we're going to get the ball at the second half. It's 14-6 to six at this time um, to start the third quarter. So I said, man, let's get us a touchdown here. We'll come out and put the game away to start the third quarter. Um, great run, Jamal Berry, getting good blocking off the right side by Roddy Tomlin. Um, Casey goes to work here. Good job of buying some time. Finds Walter across the middle who had another big night. He ended up with 94 catches on the season. And then we run the quarterback draw up the middle. Casey takes it in. Benton makes the kick. We're up 21-6 to six with just a few minutes left in the second quarter. And Brockman's seventh rushing touchdown of the season. So the racers kick it off. And uh, Simo has uh, about 250 to work with here. Uh, towards the end of the first half. So that ball was almost intercepted by Darius Buck, and then a couple of plays later, he almost got another one. Yeah, you know, we again, we're, we're doing some good things here. Here's great coverage, and um, I thought Buck had picked that one off, and that would have been big. We'd had a little bit of time to go make something happen. Um, but fortunate um, for us, they missed the field goal. So we go in at the half, 21-6, to six, feeling pretty good about where we are, especially – our defense is keeping them off the scoreboard, which is always a good sign. And my goodness, a 100-yard punt return by Walter Powell. The Racers have only had one other in their history, which is in its 88th season, and that was in the early 1950s. So uh, when you see that, you just say that's history in the, in the making right there. You don't see that every day. So we'll take our first break here with head coach Chris Hatcher. Second half highlights from SEMO and Murray State coming up next. Like the thoroughbreds we are named for, racers are spirited and proud. We have the heart and will to succeed, to go farther, learn more, and embrace wisdom. We are champions who take our place in the Murray State tradition. We are racers. Roof Brothers, a Paducah tradition for 100 years. Roof Brothers, locally owned, family run. Roof Brothers, the best selection of beer, wine, and spirits found anywhere. Roof Brothers, service from selecting that special beverage for that special occasion to a keg party at the lake. Roof Brothers, two locations to serve you. Roof Brothers, 
proud supporters of Murray State Athletics. Hi folks and welcome back to the Racer Report, the season finale with head coach Chris Hatcher, Dave Winder with you. And we're going to roll the second half highlights of the Racers against Southeast Missouri State. Murray State went into the halftime locker room up 21-6. to Coach, you mentioned it was big. You got the ball first to start the second half. Well, I really thought we had a chance to just blow the game wide open. I, I thought that we were a, a much better ball club than we played, even with the lead at the first half. We got the ball fourth and one at midfield, and I just decided, hey, let's go ahead and try to put this game out of reach. Unfortunately, we fumble, um, but our defense comes up and does a really good job. You know, we, we're playing the option well. Um, you know, we look good in those all-blue uniforms, got good coverage down the field. Um, there's a good play by our defensive line getting in there, and I believe that's Adrian Dinkins on the sack. Um, so we force them to punt, but this is when things kind of went south for us. They end up pinning us down on the half-yard line. And that ball almost got past him. <laughs> I know. I wish it had. And then we try to throw the ball out of the end zone on a – um, a throw, and Casey's just got to get rid of it. So we give up a safety, which means they're going to get good field position. So now it's 21-8. They got some momentum. So we 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 free kick to them. Yeah, and um, and they got the ball around midfield. And here, um, boy, I thought this was a um, nice coverage. I don't think that was enough to call pass interference, but they call it on us on the halfback pass. Um, so they they get a first down. They come down, we get them on third and goal, um, and we give up the corner route. We're there. We just got to learn to make those plays. And all of a sudden, that's an eight-point swing because on the extra point, Adrian Dinkins gets his hand on it. How, how big was that as, as the day turned out? Well, I mean, you know, at the end of the game, we'd have been down one right, before Brady right. um, became the hero of the afternoon. Wow, that, that was really something to, to block that point after. It's that little bitty extra point that means so much. So the racers go back to work from their own 25. This is 525 to go into the third quarter. Brockman gets a rush of 16, and then hits Jamal Berry. I really like when he gets in the open field. Look at him go. Oh, he is he's a fine football player, Dave. And I was real proud of our, our offense here. We stuttered on that first drive. Um, you know, they end up getting eight points off of it. And here on the hitch and go, great throw and catch to Trotter for a second touchdown of the evening. And right there we answer and pat our lead once again. You can see from that end zone view, threaded the needle. Yeah, that right was between a there. great throw and a great call um, and, and very well executed. But, you know, they're all of a sudden getting some momentum. They're getting some chunks. The option really isn't hurting us. It was more of their power game. And, um, you know, there's a missed tackle. Um, good hustle here by Brandon Hathaway to let us see one more play. But... Um, they're able to get it in. I wasn't sure if he got in right here, but um, they gave it to him. And so all of a sudden they come back, and it kind of at this point looks like whoever's going to get the ball last is going to well, win the game. It's it's game on here. As we head to the fourth quarter, the racers still up 28-14. to 14, So the racers have the ball first to start the quarter. And uh, Walter Powell, of course, he's a record setter this season as well, uh, both in the return game and also just catching passes as well. Uh, and then we go with Dwayne Brady. He had a good day, 13-yard gain. Yeah, that was the pass to Walter is a big third down conversion. Um, and we get down here again. Casey's trying to hit Trotter in the other side of the end zone. Um, and then old Walter, he finds a way to make plays, doesn't he? And again, we answer their score which is very good to see. And at this point, I really thought we were going to put the game away. Well, and you just think, you know, the racers are up 35-21. you still got 12 minutes to go. Uh, but Southeast is a team that you've been hammering on all day, and you think, well, they're, they'll, they're just going to lay down. But they didn't. No, they did. They kept fighting good. And here they, um, you know, were playing off a little bit, trying to get more people in the box to, um, to stop that option. And, you know, we're just not tackling well. Um, they go down and they answer, and they answered in a hurry this time. Seven plays, 71 yards. So now it's 35-28, nine minutes to go. Racers go back to work. Offensive line did a pretty good job, better than the week before, but that was a big sack there yeah, that put that, you in a hole. Yeah, that did put us in a hole. So we're third and long now, um, and then we, we're pecking away a little bit, and we end up getting a fourth and about a half a yard around midfield. I choose to punt, Dave. I didn't mm -hmm. go for it. We hadn't had much success um, during the game. And, well, what a great, great punt there by Stephen Mix um, to back it up. And all of a sudden, we're up seven, but, boy, they got a long ways to go. So they, they take over at their own 12, but then 
Lathrop hits Foster for a 35-yard gain over the middle, and they come back and they score in eight plays, 88 yards. Yeah, they, they didn't again. At this point, our, our defense just wasn't playing good. They were on the field a, a long time there. Um, so it's a tie ball game. Um, three minutes to go, I guess. Yep, um, about not three much minutes. more time left. And, 255. And, and watch Dwayne Brady. He catches a short kick. We had a actually had a reverse call, but it was such a short kick he couldn't execute it. And um, well, you talk about a thoroughbred there too. He's uh, he knew they were chasing him. He took it all the way back uh, for an 85 yard kick return for a touchdown. Wow, look at that. Place was going nuts. Oh, that was what a great play. And um, I tell you, he, <laughs> you can see him there. It parted like the Red Sea. And um, I'm mighty proud of Dwayne. He's had a great season. Um, and then, you know, we There's get them in still some... still a lot of time left. Well, there he is. And, and we, Jordan Benton did a great job of kicking the ball in the end zone. That was Blake Salter and Io back there. And here, this was a little disappointing. We missed the sack, but... Um, and, and they get a, a big chunk of yardage here. Um, and, it, you know, this time they're out of timeouts and then a fourth down play. Great play there by um, Julian Whitehead, a senior um, out of Atlanta, Georgia, to seal the victory for us. We had um, 15 seniors. We sent out with a, a big win there, Dave, um, to finish the season five and six. And um, a lot of good plays by some young players. Um, so the future's bright, but um, we'll take them any way we can get them, and that was a great way to end the season. And, and also, I'm, I'm always, uh, I always enjoy seeing the sportsmanship from you head coaches. You know, whether you win or lose, uh, the guys in our league, you all meet at mid midfield and tell each other good game. Yeah, well, I you got a lot of respect for, yeah. those, for the other team. And, you know, I always say, you know, we never give the other guys much credit. And, and you know, they got good coaches, good players, good mamas and days they want to win too. Hard fault victory, but um, the good guys won this. One. That's right, 42 35. We'll take a break, come back with some of the post game reaction in just a minute on the Racer Report. Explore a new world. You guys have a lot of experience. Come here and make your own place. It's a lot of fun. 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 Chang Chow, Lady Mei Lai. Ferris Favorin Kavilago. Taka in the Tore Nyuk Nang Chodong Bang. Dunia and down to Pijilajahi. Tanzu and the Shijia. Murray State University, your world to explore. Roof Brothers, a Paducah tradition for 100 years. Roof Brothers, locally owned, family run. Roof Brothers, the best selection of beer, wine, and spirits found anywhere. Roof Brothers, service from selecting that special beverage for that special occasion to a keg party at the lake. Roof Brothers, two locations to serve you. Roof Brothers, proud supporters of Murray State Athletics. Folks, and welcome back to the Racer Report with head coach Chris Hatcher. On Saturday, the Racers said goodbye to a bunch of great seniors, and particularly, they said goodbye to the greatest quarterback ever to suit up at Murray State, and that is Casey Brockman of Murray, Kentucky. The record book will show Brockman at the top of every season category and every career category. And afterwards, after that big win over SEMO on Saturday, we had a chance to sit down and get his thoughts on what it has meant for him and his family to be at Murray State. I mean, it's it's just been pretty neat how everything has kind of came full circle. I mean, I um, looked up in the stands and saw Coach Hobbs actually sitting with my parents, and then um, 
the guy doing the radio interview at the end of the game was Coach McKeel, who's my like, you know, high school coach. I mean, it's just it's just crazy how everything's kind of evolved and come full circle and just kind of worked out walking on and, you know, having an under center, you know, eye formation pro style offense. And then luckily Coach Hatcher coming here and um, giving me a chance to play and, and just kind of, I mean, everything, I, I don't think I could have written a script better that would have worked out any 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 better for for myself personally, and um, I'm I'm grateful for everybody along the way that's that's helped, you know, get me to this point. Whether it's Coach Hobbs, Coach McKeel, my parents, well, whoever it is, just grateful for the people that have that have helped me achieve the stuff that I've achieved, and and grateful for um, Georgia Southern for for letting Coach Hatcher go and come here because I mean, without the offense he brought in, I don't think any of this probably would have been possible. Well, you could tell there uh, Casey Brockman uh, even choking up just a little bit as he addressed the media afterwards. You know, Coach, uh, you were a great quarterback when you played. You coached a great one here. Where does he kind of stand with all the, the kids you've worked with, uh, as, uh, quarterbacks, I mean? Where does he stand with all the guys you've coached? Well, he, he's up there at the top. I mean, you know, he's had a great career. He's set just about every OVC record, every school record. Um, you know, what a great story. We've talked about it many a time. Walk on to All-America quarterback. Um, you know, very few times at this level do guys grow up wanting to play at the smaller level school. Um, you know, I, I grew up, I want to be a Georgia Bulldog, you know, or go play at Florida State. And, um, and and he got to fulfill his dream of being a Murray State racer. And I think that's what makes his story so special. Well, he certainly had a great, great career. And uh, uh, you said goodbye to a bunch of good seniors here and uh, uh, a, a group that really came in. And uh, you said something on your radio show this week. Um, we're not where we want to be, but we're not where we were. That's right. That's and these right. guys helped you helped you advance. Yeah, they they did. They did set a good foundation. You know, they've averaged six wins a season. Um, in the previous five, it was like two point six wins a season, and that's a big difference. It is. And and these guys had a lot to do with it. So I appreciate their effort. Um, they worked extremely hard. They bought into what we were trying to get accomplished, laid a good foundation for future racer teams. Well, we certainly uh, salute those seniors as they played their last game on Saturday. Big win for the racers, 42-35 uh, to uh, go out, uh, not going to the playoffs, but at least go out with a victory here at the end of the season. So we got more here with the coach. We'll take another break, come back with more on the Racer Report. Roof Brothers, a Paducah tradition for 100 years. Roof Brothers. Locally owned, family run. Roof Brothers, the best selection of beer, wine, and spirits found anywhere. Roof Brothers, service from selecting that special beverage for that special occasion to a keg party at the lake. Roof Brothers, two locations to serve you. Roof Brothers, proud supporters of Murray State Athletics. Murray State University, your world to explore. Back here on the Racer Report with head coach Chris Hatcher as we wrap up the 2012 football season. Racers finishing 5-6, 4-4 four and four in the Ohio Valley Conference. Coach, I was convinced when this season started that the Racers would be playing football on Thanksgiving weekend, but you guys are building towards that, and maybe next season will be the one that gets you there. Well, you know, that's our goal each year, to make the playoffs and be the Ohio Valley Conference champions. Um, you know, we finished 5-6, and six, 
play here or there. We could be sitting here at 9 and 2 getting ready to play another ball game. And that's kind of the way it is with a team that's right around 500. You know, you're a play here or there for really having a good season. And then you're a play away from having the season like we had. We had some good wins. We had some near good wins. Um, we played a very difficult schedule. Um, but our guys, they played hard each and every week. There was never any quit in them. Um, and, and we just didn't, we didn't make the breaks when we had the opportunities. And I thought, I thought uh, you know, as we started to do the show tonight, uh, I'm not sure the average fan out there realizes how much these kids have to put in. The injuries, you know, the schoolwork, and just gearing up for 11 games. Well, it's a full-time job. And, yeah. um, you know, it's, a, it's an all-year event for these guys to get themselves ready to play. Um, and, and we got some good student athletes. You know, we had 15 seniors, and I look up, a couple of them are going to graduate in December. Um, the rest of them are on track to finish up in the spring. So, um, all in all, good class and, you know, average season. But, um, but again, um, you know, we're, we're doing some good things that, so that gets me excited about the future. Okay, we'll take our final break here in the Racer Report with Chris Hatcher. Come back and talk about 2013 in just a moment. Like the thoroughbreds we are named for, racers are spirited and proud. We have the heart and will to succeed, to go farther, learn more, and embrace wisdom. We are champions who take our place in the Murray State tradition. We are racers. Roof Brothers, a Paducah tradition for 100 years. Roof Brothers, locally owned, family run. Roof Brothers, the best selection of beer, wine, and spirits found anywhere. Roof Brothers, service from selecting that special beverage for that special occasion to a keg party at the lake. Roof Brothers, two locations to serve you. Roof Brothers, proud supporters of Murray State Athletics. Back here to wrap it up with head coach Chris Hatcher on the Racer Report as the Racers uh, put the 2012 season into the history books and look forward to 2013. Coach, in 2013 you could play 12 games, so the Racers will play Missouri and Bowling Green, uh, a couple of money games there at the start of the season. Yeah, you know, that's um, not something that I look forward to, but um, it is what it is there. and we gotta, you know, got to have a great offseason and um, going to have a very difficult schedule. Um, again, the OVC is so much more improved than um, when I took over the job three years ago. It's a battle each and every week. You know, you look at this season, we, we beat Tennessee Tech really bad. Um, and they were Tennessee, the defending champions. Yep, Tennessee Martin, they beat us pretty good. And then Tennessee Tech goes and beats Tennessee Martin. So, you know, it's, it's a wide open race um, all the way across the board. You know, when Eastern Illinois beat us this year by one in overtime, who would have thought they'd be the conference champs? But I'm really excited. We got a good home slate, and I think our guys are going to work hard and be ready to come out and try to do better than we did this year. Part of that home slate will be uh, Eastern Illinois, Eastern Kentucky, and Jacksonville State coming to Roy Stewart Stadium. So we'll look forward to the uh, 2013 season. Everybody always wonders, what, what do the coaches do after the season? Well, they go right back to work for the next season. <laughs> there is no rest for the weary, That's so right. we're out recruiting as we speak. Uh, okay, Coach. Hey, thank, thank you. you. Thank Thanks you, Thanks for a great season. We'll look for better things in 2013. We'll see you next time on the Racer Report with Head Coach Chris Hatcher.